Hello everyone and welcome to the VentureSolve Fusion Page tutorial. We're gonna have a look on how you can access and operate Fusion Page today. So first of all, what is a Fusion Page in DaVinci Resolve? Fusion is the page in DaVinci Resolve which is useful for compositing and by compositing I mean putting different elements together which includes graphics and motion graphics, also 3D elements, special effects and you can make mind-blowing videos with it. And also, unlike Adobe After Effects, in Adobe you're having a second compositing software, which is called Adobe After Effects, but in Resolve you're having only a page, which is called Fusion, and that is used for compositing videos. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you all the basics that you need to know about Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. So I'm having a video clip on my edit page and I'm going in the Fusion page, and by default, you can see that I'm starting out with two nodes, and Fusion page work with nodes and every node has a specific job for that. So let's start from the beginning. On first of all, on the left side, you will having media in one node. So what is this media in one node doing? Just hold that in mind for a second. I'll come back in a moment. So first you can notice the media in one node, which is on the left side of your nodes. Another thing that you can notice that this media in one node is connected with the line towards the second node, which is called media out one. So what are these nodes actually are doing here? As I've said, on the left side, you can see your media in one node, and that is our source clip. You can see that it's coming from the edit page, and this is the video that I'm having. And then we're gonna process it in here, in the Fusion tab. And about the media out node, this is what is gonna render your effects and show you the end result. So first of all, if I disconnect the line between these nodes, on the right side screen, it will disappear, and you will only see the left side and there's nothing on the right side. And that is simply because they're not connected. Now, when I connect it back to each other, you can see that the right screen is appearing again. And here is the connection in between these two nodes. If we go to media out and we press two, the window will still disappear. And you can see that these two dots right here. And if you press one, the left screen will also disappear. So if you want your media in to be in here on the left side, you can press either one, or you can toggle this slot on the left side. And these two slots that you're seeing there are indicating the left and the right screen on which you are seeing right now. As you can see, Media In is now having two dots in the slots, so it's displaying on both sides. Now, just the left side is displayed and Media Out is having the second slot, so that means the Media Out is on the right side and Media In is on the left side. Okay now, so let's do something with this clip. Let's suppose that you want to add some blur into this video. So you can hold and drag this drop icon, which is a shortcut key for some nodes that are popular in DaVinci Resolve. Left click on the line to disconnect the connection between media in and out. Then connect the media in to the blur node and you can see that nothing is happening. And as I increase the blur intensity, you can also see that nothing is changing. Now I'm going to connect the blur node into the media out node and see what's going to happen. So let's try now to increase the blur intensity and as I increase the values of blur, you can see that the result on the right screen is changing and the blur is applied to the video. Now, if I disconnect the blur from the media out by left clicking on the line in between them and also the media in with the blur and now there are three separate nodes and now connecting the media in to the media out and I still increase the values of blur you can see that nothing is applied on the video and that is because our blur is not connected to the media in and out. To apply the changes, you just need to connect your media in with the blur and the blur with your media out node. That is something fundamental that you need to know about using the Fusion page and how the effects are applied over your video. We're gonna use another shortcut effect, which is the text. So I'm gonna drag it onto my node tree on the inspector, I'm gonna write beautiful fields and I'm gonna change the color of that to yellow. As you can see, we're not seeing that text effect over the screen and that is simply because our text is not connected to our nodes. And in order to connect that text to our nodes, we need to use this merge node. So you can click on the merge node and drag it onto your node tree. So what is really merge node doing here? If you want to put something over something, Okay, so I'm gonna disconnect the blur from the media out by left clicking on the line between. Then I'm gonna connect the blur into the merge node. And then I'm gonna grab the merge node and I'm gonna connect it back to media out. 
then I'm gonna position my text over the merge node. Now let's quickly go back to the edit page and you can see that in there there are no layers, no effects, not messy and this is one of the advantage of the fusion page and that is we are applying many effects without having a messy timeline in the edit. So this is the merge node that we added and I'm gonna connect the text to our merge node and let's see what's gonna happen. Now thanks to the merge node you can see that we are displaying the text node over our blurry footage and if I disconnect them you can see that text is disappearing. So I will connect the text back to the merge node so we can see the text and from the inspector you can decide the size of the text and many other things. Ok so let me tell you about this node step by step again. This is your media in node which is your source clip and you're always gonna have it in here. And it is sourcing it from this edit panel which is this video right footage. Then we have connected this media in one node to our blur node which is the blur effect. Next up we're having this merge node which we connected our text to that merge node in order to be applied on the video and then we connected the merge node out to the media out node which is rendering all the stuff and showing us the final result. If we highlight the blur node and we press 1 we're gonna see it on the left side of the screen. If you want to go deeper in some of the nodes you can highlight the selected node. Let's for example pick text. I'm gonna press 1 again and now we're gonna display just the text on the left side screen with a transparent background so that we're having a clear look of what the text is gonna be about. That way you can modify it and have a clear vision of what you're working with. In DaVinci Resolve you're having a color page but also you can do that here in the Fusion tab even that is not efficient. I'm pressing Ctrl spacebar and you can see that I'm having many effects in there. And these effects that you're seeing right now is also the same effects that you're seeing in the edit tab in the effects library. You just need to connect them in a specific order in order to be applied without having a messy timeline in the edit page. So I'm gonna press Ctrl space bar to open the select tools effect and then I'm gonna type in the search bar color and then I'm gonna look for color collector and then I'm gonna click on add to be added on my node tree. And then when I go to the inspector and I change the color of that color collector you can see that nothing is applied so I'm gonna try and connect it to the blur and see what's gonna happen. I'm changing the color and still nothing is happening. So I'm disconnecting it from the blur and I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna connect it to the merge. I'm changing the color but still there's nothing. So how can I use the color corrector to be applied on our footage? So first I'm gonna remove the blur and I'm gonna disconnect the media in one node from the merge node so that I can connect my media in to the color corrector and then the end of the color corrector to the merge node. I'm gonna highlight the color corrector, go in the inspector, change the color and you can see that the color corrector effect is applied over our footage. That is because it was not connected to the media in one node. When I go to the edit tab you can see that our video is having the effect that we just applied in our fusion page. And I did this just to explain you the idea of how the nodes are working in the fusion page. So now I'm gonna bring back our blur node back and remove the color corrector node because we're not gonna use it. And as I mentioned earlier there are some shortcut keys for some effects in DaVinci Resolve that are most used and you can find them in here. And fusion page is also used for composing and masking. So what if I want to control this blur? I'm gonna grab this ellipse icon and I'm gonna leave it over my node tree. And now let's connect it to our merge node which is usually connected to our text. And when I go to the right side of the screen and I move my ellipse icon which is masking our text, you can see that the text is disappearing from the sides which are going outside of the circle. And that is affecting just the text because just the text is connected to that merge node which ellipse is connected. And now when I get this ellipse disconnected and connected to the blur, you can see that the now the circle masking is affecting just the blurness without the text and that's because it's connected just to the blur. You can see that no layers has been added in the edit page. Ok so once again I'm gonna tell you all about these nodes in here so that you can have a better understanding of the node. The media in one node is your source clip and that is connected to the blur. The eclipse is controlling the blur. Then we're having a merge node which is connected to our text and lastly we have our media out node which is the end result. So what will happen if I want to put another clip into our fusion timeline? In the fusion page I'm having a media pool just like I'm having in the edit page. So on the left side I'm having the media pool and I'm gonna try to import another clip into the fusion timeline. 
So I'm selecting one of the clips and I'm dragging it and leaving it over my node 3 in the fusion timeline. So now let's disconnect the ellipse from the blur and let's highlight the media in 2 which is our second clip and select number 1 so we can see it on the left side of the screen. And one more thing about this timeline is that it is showing the duration just on the clip that is currently highlighted. In this case it's just the media in 2. So I'm gonna connect this media in 2 to our blur node. And you can notice that nothing is really happening. And that is because it is already connected to this media in one node. So I'm gonna disconnect both of them. And then I'm gonna highlight this media in two and connect it to the blur. And now you can see that everything that we did on the media in one clip is applied on the media two clip. I can also add a solid color background to this clip. So I'm pressing control space to open the toolbox with effects. And I'm looking for a background. I'm selecting it and then I click on add. Now our background node is added and automatically a merge node is connected also to the media in two nodes. While the background is there, I'm highlighting it and I'm changing the color of that background to red, clicking OK to apply and you can see that nothing is still happening. You can also see that they're also connected to each other, but the media in two is not connected to the blur node and that's why we're seeing nothing on the screen. So let's disconnect the media in one node from the blur and then we're gonna grab the merge node which is connected to the media in two node and the background and connect it to the blur and you can see that the effect with the red background is applied on the right side of the screen which is your media out one and that's how the node tree is working and it gets better and better if you practice it okay so let's suppose i want to assemble them all in the group and be more organized in our fusion timeline i'm pressing ctrl plus spacebar and i'm gonna search underlay in here so i'm typing underlay in the search bar and then i'm highlighting it and then selecting add and there we have it, you can make a group for it. You can grab the corner of that under layer and you can highlight the nodes that you wish to have that in that group. Then you can press F2 and you can name that group for a better understanding of what is included in that group that you have just created with under layer. And if you want to have another group, I'm gonna put in here this random curve node. I'm gonna leave it over the ellipse and I'm gonna press again Control plus spacebar to open our effects menu and I'm adding another under layer and I'm grabbing the corner so that I can assemble all of them into one group. That's how you create groups. So I'm gonna go back and undo all the things that I have just did. So these were the basics of the nodes in the Fusion page and how are they working with each other. And now let's do some compositing in this Fusion page. So now let's remove all of this. I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna backspace to delete them. So that was all the basics and now I'm gonna show you how you can compose it. So the next explanation is gonna be on the green screen in the Fusion page. Right now I'm having here some media in my timeline in the edit page. I'm highlighting it and I'm going into the Fusion tab. As you can see it's already been done so I'm gonna remove the notes and start from scratch. As you are familiar with I'm having the media in and media out which are connected to each other and media out is on the right side screen and on the left side nothing is there so I'm gonna highlight it, press 1 so I can have a preview of our source script on the left side. From the media pool I'm gonna import another video on which I want to make them in the screen. I'm disconnecting media in and out and I'm connecting media in to the media in 2 to the media out. And nothing is happening because it's coming up front and we cannot see the media in 1. So I'm gonna remove it and bring it back to the previous setup. And now I'm gonna add the merge node. And merge node in the fusion page is really powerful node and people are really getting confused about it. So now I'm gonna connect the merge node into our media in by pulling the out point of the media in into the in point of the merge node. Then the out point of the merge node into our media out. And then I'm gonna connect our second source clip which is media in 2 into our merge node. And you can see what is this. This is for our foreground as you can see displaying. So we're in our foreground. I'm gonna highlight the merge and I'm gonna resize it. And I'm gonna try to make it fit to our green screen frame. And as you can notice, there are many problems in here with this resizing and also many difficulties. So first of all, when you take a look at the green screen, you can see that the second footage is actually moving and our clip is not moving. So we can notice the background screen is actually moving and it is going out of frame. So I'm gonna keep this on a side for a second 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight media in one and I'm gonna press Control spacebar to open the effects tab. And in there, I'm gonna add a planner tracker. So I'm typing planner tracker and I'm adding the first one. So now I'm gonna add the planner tracker, click on add. And then I'm gonna track the movement of this first video. So first of all, I'm gonna hold control and then scroll it to zoom in into our footage. Click with the scroll bar to drag it up and down. So that is basically something like the pen tool. We have to drag it like it's a pen tool on the corner of the screen. So I'm gonna click on the left bottom corner to create our first point in here. Then I'm going up onto the left top corner and I'm selecting another point in that corner. Following by that, I'm moving to the right on the top right corner. I'm creating the third point in that corner and then I'm going down onto our fourth corner and selecting it there to make the fourth point and then moving to the left to our beginning point to connect our last point with the first one and now everything is connected as you can see so now let's zoom out of our footage okay so now you can see the whole frame here that is connected from all the corners of the green screen now I'm gonna move the playhead on the first frame and I'm gonna go in the inspector and then click on set and then I'm gonna select this icon which says track to the end and right now I have just started tracking the whole window that we have just selected okay so what I'm gonna do next as you can see everything is tracked on our timeline and now we just need to connect our media into into our planner tracker so i'm grabbing the out point of our media 2 and i'm connecting it to our planner tracker then i'm highlighting this planner tracker i'm going in the inspector on the top right and in the operation mode i'm selecting corner pin next up you want to go on the right screen on where you can see your media into footage and you want to rearrange all the corners so i'm zooming in and grabbing the corner and i'm leaving it exactly in the edge of that green screen i'm gonna do this for all of the corners that i'm having until it fits the full size of the green screen and this time when we are gonna play it through you can notice even that our footage is moving thanks to the planner tracker our footage on media in 2 is also moving simultaneously with the media in 1 and it's looking more realistic so i'm going in the edit tab so you can preview what we just did and that is all without making any mess in the edit tab and this was just one example of what fusion page is capable of you can also make 3d text 3d elements and many other effects in the fusion tab I was just covering just the fundamentals and basics of Fusion Page in DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video was informative and helpful. If that was the case, make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss anything. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.